Osamo, who we thought ideally would be the quickest finisher, didn't seem to have much pop. She went early and she stayed seated. Voss didn't get out of the saddle till right. Kapeki had already come over the top of her. Kapeki was full send out of the saddle and there was different gearing ratios that we can dive into, but I don't know if you guys noticed the different sprinting techniques there, which I could only calculate to fatigue and who had I the agree. most snap at that moment. Totally agree. Boom. Totally I think that's agree. the first time you've ever agreed with me. It's no, but it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's, <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Move podcast talking about the 2024 Perry Roubaix Femme brought to you by Zwift, a.k.a. the hell of the north. It doesn't matter if you're a, a boy or a girl. It's hellish. <laughs> this, this, and, and by the way, I just full disclosure, I've never ridden the race. So I wouldn't totally know, but I've ridden some cobbles, but it, it is, um, it's an exceptional race. A lot of Kopecky, which of course we'll get into, uh, uh, which we chose, me and my two teammates here chose last weekend to, to rebound from her disappointment to her Flanders, it rode an exceptional race and so many parts of it were just so special for her. And we'll talk about all that. But before we do, uh, I'm joined by the belated birthday girl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. How was the B-Day? Oh, it was amazing. It's perfect. I love like, a good what you, birthday. Well, like, what do you do on a birthday? Um, I'm like, I I'm really curious. <laughs> I, uh, I rode my bike. I ran. Oh, I did PT. I hung out with my husband all day and we ate at home. Like, it was perfect. Some fresh and drank, seafood. And drank uh, IPAs. Uh, no, come on. I Wine. was like into the Blanc de Blanc and then moved into a nice cab. Huh. So fancy. I know. Uh, also joined by Mari Holden, who clearly is still on vacation. Listen, folks, when I die and come back, I tell you, I, I'm going to, I don't know, write down like three things. I'm one of them's coming back as Mari Holden, still kicking it in Hawaii, clearly. Yes, loving it here. And all your friends here are saying hi to you. Oh, I love it. There. It's a very, it, it, I joke, but it, it's such a special place. Everything about the Big Island. Not to digress. Yeah, it's special. I, I love swimming there. I know you you ran into some of my swim buddies. Mm -hmm. The riding for those you know a bunch of cyclists listening to this, the riding is incredible on the Big Island, and it's so well known for obviously the Ironman. But once you get to know the island, you don't just have to ride on on Queen K. I mean, there's so many other roads and great climbs, and you can just kind of explore. So I'm jealous, super jelly. It's been amazing. <laughs> Lots of exploring. Yeah, good. Tell Brad hi. I will. <laughs> um, if he's not, is he like on the side of the thing? Let's say, hey, Brad, if you're right there, what's up, Brad? Uh, to sleep still. <laughs> yeah, right. You had to get up early. It was I felt a like very I had to get up. Well, the here. peacock <laughs> coverage didn't come on. I got up early just getting ready for all of it. Mm -hmm. And they kind of, they only gave us a couple hours. So, yeah, I mean, it didn't come on till 3 15 in the morning here. So, oh, <laughs> there's that. What a show off. <laughs> uh, but let's, uh, I'd love y'all's take and y'all's perspective. I thought, um, well, I guess we shouldn't be too surprised. That was our pick last week. A lot of Kapeki, uh, is, is just uh, to me, it seems like a perfect race for her. But, uh, Mar, you go first. Like, what just overall uh, impressions and, and takeaways from, uh, today's Perry Bay. As you said, I mean, I feel like Lada just rode such an incredible race and she was so confident through the whole thing. I mean, the one time that she had the, the issue with her aunt, with her handlebars and had to go back to the cars to get an Allen key. I mean, she just, and this was right before one of the cobble sections and she just looked so in control and not stressed at all about having to go so far back and wait and then fix it. And then come back and then she went straight to the front again. I mean, when you see that, you just know she's on really good form and feeling really comfortable. Um, so I think she just rode an incredible race, but one of the people that I was super impressed with was Pfeiffer Georgie. I mean, fighting and coming back so many times. So um, I loved the racing. Thought it was an incredible day. Allie? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, so this is the fourth edition of Perry Roubaix. Bom avec Zwift, Paris, Roubaix, Paris, Paris, Paris. Yeah. Somebody Close correct. Up. Somebody's going to, yeah. Close so, up. 
Thanks. Um, so this is our uh, first finish with a sprint. So the last three editions have been solo finishes. So, was, and we did call Capecchi, but for those listening, the group text between Mari and Lance, we're coming in one K to go. And he's like, who, who is it? Who is it? And I said, my heart is Voss, but my head is Balsamo. And I did say this last week, and I'm not taking full credit that Capecchi would come back like an angry bull. And I have never seen somebody <laughs> storm a velodrome like she did with such confidence and pure power, will and determination to win that sprint. I know we're going to geek out on all the track racers that were at this finishing group. And I agree with Mari Pfeiffer. Georgie has kind of a game ball for me in a lot of ways. And I think there's so many impressive rides we can talk about. Um, but I kind of disagree with you, Mari, in a way. I felt Capecchi had so much, like she said that her team was making her laugh because obviously Flanders was a big hit on her. So I think she had a hard week. So they're like, you know, here's some jokes here. It's like, whatever you want, Lada, like have a good week. Like, you know, this day is yours. But I felt she was a little bit of a Goldilocks and a princess in the pea out there. Like, I need an Allen key. I need a bottle. I need this. I need that. Like she looked she was remaining calm, but I could see that she was in her head, how much she wanted to win this. And she wanted to make sure everything was right. And she was stressing me out. Like she wasn't even attacking on every cobble sector. She was attacking on uphill paved rollers, yeah. which yeah. are nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like I, she I, wanted I, it so bad. Out. I feel like when she gets her wins, she's like, she attacks and she always goes for it from the front and attacks on rollers and stuff. I mean, we see it, we saw it in uh, the tour de France last year. We see it in all the big races. She doesn't ride from behind at all. When she's feeling good, everyone's going to know around her that she's feeling good. Cause she's always on the go uh, in the difficult sections. I mean, when you're, when you should be going to, but it's but even some of the paved sections, that is the one time I worried. I thought if she's, uh, if, if if she's having a good day and this is, or, or you know, expecting to, to potentially win, like I don't, you typically save those moves for the, and, and not just um, save them for the cobbles, but if y'all, anybody that watched the race, and if you didn't, we'll describe a little, they're all categorized, right? So when you think of climbs, you know, you have a category four climb, three climb, two climb, one climb, and then a horse category. Obviously, as it goes up, they get harder, they get longer, steeper and harder. This is no different in Perry Rebay, both the men's and women's race. Um, they, they, they have one stars all the way up to five stars. And, and so, and you can see it by watching the race. I mean, a two star section looks drastically different than a five star section. It just does. And so I'm watching this going, boy, I <clears throat> feels like we should maybe save it for a four or five star section, a really difficult section. And she did make some moves there, but nonetheless, I mean, she clearly was in control whether it was, fetching an Allen key or getting a bottle when you're on a good day, you're like, yeah, I'm going to be at the back. But as soon as I get this result, I'm going to go around 30 girls. No problem. Like she was oh. in control. Yeah. So to, to let you guys know too, the race was 148.5 K it's three K longer than last year, just because there was some sort of flooding going on 29.2 K of cobbles, 17 cobbled sector sectors and two uh, were five star. So two were the more difficult kind. And so basically the women's race started with two big circuits that had a lot of wind. That's something we need to talk about. It's probably one of the warmest Perry Rupees yep. ever. It was about 74 or 75 degrees. Um, and the wind gusts were up to 28 miles an hour. Uh, so there was a lot of crosswinds in the first two laps that the women did. And then they entered the finish that you guys will talk about in the men's race. So they hit the last 17 sectors that the men will do tomorrow. And something also interesting in there is there's no, uh, Arenberg in the, in the race, um, because it's a little too close to the start. So the women don't race on that famous Arenberg forest section, mm -hmm. but they, the race promoters were thinking it's too big of a group to enter that large of a long cobbled second section. So that's something interesting to think about. Yeah. And, and if you do plan on watching the men's race and if you followed the lead up to, to Perry Bay, there's tons of tons of controversy around the Arnberg Forest this year with the chicanes that they put in uh, before the forest. Uh, that, again, having never done the race, used to typically be this fast run and very, very sketchy um, and, and sketchy if it's dry, even sketch, way sketchier if it's wet. Um, so they put in these chicanes so that they, the women avoided that, which I, 
I would happily skip that uh, having not ever done it, but uh, just having seen it. Um, Hashtag uh, cer- cer- chicane gate. Hashtag yeah, cer- chicane cer- gate. Certainly, yeah. If, certainly <laughs> if it was close to the start, that's something you would not. Want it would have been, it would have been within like the first 20 K of the start. So I, I, I think that was the right decision. Like ultimately maybe the race could go a little longer into the forest, but yeah, still very exciting. I don't think it takes away from the bomb edition at all. No. No. I one thing back to a lot of Kopecky and her confidence and comfort. I felt like you're right. Some of those uh, portions where, you know, she was on the road and made her surges or attacks were a little bit questionable, but I thought the one time that she looked like maybe she got a little nervous about something was coming closer to the finish when she started to change who she was looking at to Balsambo and really kind of starting to try and um, you know, stay behind Balsamo. And then until the last kilometer, um, she was, they were kind of marking each other, which I mean, they, they had to switch into track racing mode at that time and they've all raced each other on the track. But, um, but that was the one moment when, you know, you had texted and then we both responded same time, Allie about Balsamo. And that was my thing. All of a sudden, you know how, when you're in a group, you can start feeling how the other people are riding. I felt like, at that moment, Kopecky was thinking, wow, well, Samo is the one to, to beat here and I need to pay attention to her. Because up until then, I was thinking Voss, too, you know, was trying to figure out which one of them, which one of them. But uh, it was that moment where I thought Balsamo really could pull it off because Kopecky was nervous about, you know, acting nervous about Balsamo, in my opinion. I, it's interesting. Well, you know what would have been, the to me, the, I mean, just the ultimate black belt move because and we talked about this in the, in our, in our pre-show, you know, this race, like tour Flanders, like so many of the cobbled classics, you just can't give up. I mean, people, people get dropped. They have bad moments, the mechanicals, uh, they get caught out, they get stuck behind somebody and they just can't get around them. So they get, you essentially get dropped. You just can't give up in these races. And we saw that with fire for Georgie and Elisa Osamo. So, uh, but I, I don't, I'm sure you guys caught this, but when they were trying to bridge back up, she was having, Lisa was having none of that. <laughs> and, and the commentators were sort of going on and, and, and Pfeiffer Georgie was saying, Hey, you, you need to pull through. I, I mean, look, it's not a great look on TV, but boys, it's smart. <laughs> if you, if you yeah. think, if you see them right there and you're sort of judging, okay, we're, we're, we're not losing time. We're maybe pulling back a little time. I can bluff a little bit because <laughs> That's the, you know, that's, a, that's what an experienced bike racer does is you just sort of sit back and make some excuses. There, there are plenty of those and let the other person do the work, which she did. She did some pulls, but, um, smart bike racing. Yeah, she smart was bike racing, but also Pfeiffer Georgie got herself back into the race and then ended up on the podium, which, I mean, I wouldn't have counted on when she w- bridged up to there, you know, I mean, it right. was, that was so impressive that she could do it <laughs> after after bringing her up so that's what i thought was interesting when you look at our our lead group coming into the velodrome um i made a joke i looked over at blaze i'm like how many world champions you know we have in this group a bunch i was like okay Kapeki's multiple time world champion on the track current world champion on the road Voss has lost count of how many times she's won world championships also almost pretty close to that at this point with all her track and then you have amber crack and Pfeiffer Georgie in there, who, when you look them up, the results are, you got a stage at UAE tour, you've got a queen of the mountains Jersey, but these women have been, um, domestiques for so much of their career. Um, Amber cracks Dutch. So when she goes to world, she's working for Voss and on her team, she's, uh, yeah, domestique. And then Pfeiffer Georgie has been a domestique for great Britain for so many years. So she's working for Lizzie Dagman, but these women are that strong that they're making the splits time after time. Again, the consistency of the group that kept going up the road, like the deck was shuffling, but the same riders were basically there. And Mm -hmm. so we could see who the best riders were. So I am super proud of Amber crack for her ride today and Pfeiffer Georgie for that third place, pipping Voss at the line and looking at her Palomars, like this is the best result, like in so many ways, besides she is national champion, of course, current national champion uh, of Great Britain. But come on, third yeah. <laughs> today. Yeah. Bravo to her. I I was just so impressed. Like she gets to see you in the douche, douches T-shirt if she wants one, which Lance, okay. I'm really I'm disappointed that you're not matching with me I know. today. Well, uh, uh, my 
my team leader did not send me a memo saying <laughs> this is the origin of the story. This is where the, 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 the sea and the douches came from. And I, I, Hey, I mean, if you would like for you, you guys can keep talking. I can run downstairs and put one on, but, um, does Anna, does Anna have a shirt like this, like small enough for you to make sure it's nice and tight and white? No. Um, I'd have to go. I don't know if she's a big fan of me rooting around in her drawers, but, uh, I'd, I'd have to go. <laughs> I'd have to go Ooh, do that. I could go a lot of places that way. And I'm not yeah, going right. to do that. <laughs> well, what, what I was going to tell you all earlier, you know, it's, it's slight um, exit from what we're talking about, but it's, it's, it's crazy here in Austin right now because, because the, the eclipse is coming, right? So there, there is, this is why we got a little late start and we were trying to figure out the timing because Olivia has a volleyball game in Dallas. And so the, they're trying to get there and I was, da, 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 da. but it's nuts here. Uh, for the eclipse and I'm going to be gone. So I'm going to miss the eclipse. Apparently it might be cloudy, uh, okay. but we're, Austin is right in the path of what they call totality. Ooh. So, and there's like, there's shit tons of people here. Oh man. Anyway, I know. Well, there you go. Well, that's, that's good. You, we had an eclipse today. Come on. Like Lotta's wearing all white sprinting yes. in the velodrome. She still went full scent on the all white. So, you know, the rainbow skin suit and I'm um, speaking of see you in the douches. Cause I really do like this. We do tea. I have on, um, Lance, I, you better wear one tomorrow. I also have my yeah. watch the farm hat on, um, caps, caps, not hats, but yeah, speaking of like a little crisp shower, I mean, these women are now in the famous, uh, showers there at the velodrome and also like, so you're going to freshen up a little bit. So I was thinking about our, um, sponsor of the show, which is interesting is one skin. Good idea. Yeah. Taking care of your skin as you're getting that grit and grime and, uh, all the cobbled dirt out of your eyebrows. Um, (laughs) and I just had a birthday. So thank you for all saying happy birthday to me. Um, (laughs) but one skin's super simple. Um, they are the sponsor of the move Fom editions, um, all year long here. And it's super easy. Just like, I got it right here. Once again, like just kind of, we do a little simple wash, pat your hair, like pat your skin dry and apply it daily. And so it's super easy to use. Um, I personally am really loving the eye topical supplement right now. I don't know what you guys are liking, but it's making like the under eyes, like Mari's been up since three. She looks perfect. Like she always does. (laughs) And I can tell like, it's just, it's a little, it's a little moisturizer. Um, yeah, but one skin's awesome. They have a proprietary OS one peptide and it's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, mm. wrinkles, and thinning skin. So yeah, Mari, you're, you're a big fan. I am a big fan, <laughs> but it also, I think reverses damage too, which is another thing to remind people about, you know, it's never too late to start taking care of your skin, even though, um, even though I've been somebody who thinks taking care of your skin is important ever since I was a lot younger. Um, but I travel a ton, as Lance had said, and I'm in Hawaii right now and been in the sun a lot. Um, so having an easy skincare routine is super important to me. Um, so yeah, been using yeah. it all the time. And you know, before we started the show and the members only portion, I mean, Lance was a little concerned how he looked. Um, and we want Lance to look his best. And <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> instead of adjusting lighting, Lance just like applied a little one skin under those eyes yep. and he looks yep. like fresh as a daisy. Now. I know. Yep. He looks as beautiful as ever. One skin is the world's first skin longevity company by focusing on the cellular aspects of aging. One skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Getting get started today with 15% off using the code the move at one skin.co that's 15% off one skin.co with code the move. And when you purchase, um, if they ask where you heard about them, Please uh, tell us that we sent you because um, obviously not many of us need that much confidence, but one skin is basically <laughs> confidence in a bottle. I'll tell you that. So thanks to one skin well, back to the douches. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the sprint. Cause I, uh, you mentioned so many of these ladies were, have been track world champions. I think it's also worth noting. And if you watch the race, you, you clearly see it finishes on a velodrome. There's a very old velodrome. Right. It's, it's, this is so retro that, that it's, it's retro of retro. So it's, it's, it's a different length, um, in terms of, uh, the circumference. And it's also not very steep. Now it is this, the, the sides are banked. Um, but it's not as steep as a typical velodrome. Some of those are upwards of 40%. This is, is way more shallow. 
nonetheless, the dynamics of sprinting on a, on a velodrome are such that the inside line is 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 clearly riding a much shorter distance for a lot of Kopecky to first of all find yourself in a boxed in position. So that's uh, I was a little surprised that she would end up there, but two, not to panic, right, and know that that she's going to find her way out. Maybe even, and I would even uh, theorize that with that rainbow jersey and with her presence in the peloton, you get a little leeway, right? You, if you're if you're a nobody, they don't let you out. If you're a lot of Kopecky, you might get a little wiggle room to get out. But she gets out and has to has to come over the top. Which, uh, again, so some, one of you propeller heads out there can figure this out, how much farther she had to ride. Now, we're not talking 50 meters, but it's enough, right? It's, one of the, it's enough that, that if, you come, if, if you can't come around and you lose by a tire width, then you realize you, you might have ridden two or three feet farther. So it wasn't ideal. She, she was boxed in. When she got out, she had no choice but to come around and come over the top. I mean, it just proves that she, she's certainly the, the deserving winner, but... If for all you kids out there that want to go sprint on a velodrome ever, you got to take the inside line. That is the shortest line. Well, I have ridden that velodrome quite a bit. Um, and we have seen in wet years, the inside, like with that paint can be slippery because it's like a wooden velodrome too. And it's, uh, outside. So the inside, like when Voss was way on the inside, I'm like, Ooh, mm. good thing it's dry. Cause we saw crashes there last year and in the men's races as well It is a very shallow velodrome for sure. Um, but getting the momentum at those speeds is difficult. And that's where we also can geek out on, uh, gearing issues. And I noticed yeah. one thing, which we did not talk about in the pre-show the way these women were sprinting to the finish, um, Balsamo, who we thought ideally would be the quickest finisher, didn't seem to have much pop. She went early and she stayed seated. Voss didn't yeah. get out of the saddle till Capecchi right. had already come over the top of her. Capecchi was full send out of the saddle and there were different gearing ratios that we can dive into. But I don't know if you guys noticed the different sprinting techniques there, which I could only calculate to fatigue and who had yeah, the most snap at that moment. Totally agree. Boom. Totally. I think that's agree. the first time you've ever agreed with me. That's no, but it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> this is a pair. I mean, any any classic is it's sprinting at the end of any classic is just different. It's not. It's not at the end of a flat easy easy ish stage. It's. I, I told. I mean, when they I almost watched them, pulled it off though. I mean, Balsamo almost yeah. did. It. Even though she ran out of ran out of juice like right before the line, she was almost. She almost made it. It was. It was just really impressive how much Kopecky had. <laughs> but, but, by, by the way, had she done that, I mean, this this is, mm -hmm. and I, I mentioned it in our group chat before, uh, or when we were, we were trying to pick a winner. I mean, that it is, it, I don't care uh, which part of the sport it is, to, to, to get the double of Flanders in Roubaix is is very, very difficult. And I think it's, I mean, it's obviously physically difficult um, to both those races individually, but you have to imagine she had such an emotional roller coaster of, of winning last week. You know, the, it's, um, I mean, you could, you could, you could almost say that a lot of Kopecky had an advantage, right? You have a bad day, you're upset. Uh, you want some sort of revenge or some sort of comeback. Whereas the euphoria and the high of winning a big race, uh, like Bolzano did for, for in, in Flanders, it's tough to get geared back up. It just is, I think. Yeah, I think it like we were talking about earlier, I think she had a week where a team really gave her some morale, support, let her have fun. Um, but I could definitely see ooh, the pressure she put on herself and just that force of nature and just raw power. I have never seen anything like that. I'm still so impressed. Um, but talking about gearing, yeah. um, we had some interesting gearing choices. So if we're just comparing first and second place, which luckily um, <laughs> we know a lot about their gearing. Uh Balsamo was riding. Um, so these are both SRAM teams. Uh, full disclosure, I've been a SRAM athlete my entire career. Um, hashtag not sponsored of the show, but great, great brand for me uh, to ride. But they were riding one buys. So Lance, I mean, in mm. your career, you probably would never have imagined riding a one buy in a classic. No. no. But with the way gearing is these days, you can do this. So they were riding, uh, you know, an ETAP, so a wireless uh, electronic shifting one buys and Balsamo being a sprinter in a track. I found it actually kind of shocking because she tends to ride at a higher cadence. She chose a 52 front, 52 tooth front chain ring and a 1028 in the back. Hmm. And, and Lada was riding a 50 tooth front and a 1033 in the back. And they both are sprinters. Lada's 
probably less of a class, like a pure sprinter, right? She's more of a classic rider's powerhouse. I was interested to see Balsamo's gearing choices. And then when we do dive into tires, we're looking between 32 to 35. Uh, SD Works Prime was on um, 35 millimeter tires. Um, so tubeless, of course. Um, huge, huge difference. Mm-hmm. Back to, 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 to our day. I mean, you, I mean, you, you said I would, I would have thought it was crazy to ride on a one by for sure. I mean, we never would have even thought about that. I remember when they, when they went one by on mountain bikes, I thought, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to wait a little bit. This feels like one of these cycling trends. I'm just going to stick with my two by and you know, like five years go by. I'm like, Hmm, doesn't feel like a trend anymore. feels like <laughs> it's here to stay. So th- this may be, you, you may see more and more of this on the road, but the tire width, I mean, what a difference from, from five, 10, 15, 20 years. It's a huge advantage on, on, on especially races and roads like this. Well, and the yeah. frames have to be able to fit those size tires too. Right. So it's pretty, a lot of technology had to change in order to go with that. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's just technology is super cool in there and to see how that's changed. And and some teams were going back from, you know, was companies have made bike companies have made specific bikes for Roubaix before. And, you know, gravel is obviously a big thing. Um, there was news that I can't remember what men's team was riding gravel bikes uh, tomorrow just for tire <laughs> clearance, I think. Um, but now these road bikes are built with much more tire clearance. So you can kind of choose your own adventure. Um, and this case is not an adventure. It's a hell hellish day, but, um, yeah, technology. Uh, hey, Allie, hang on one second. Just, just cause I want to, I want to bank a little ammunition for George tomorrow. Back up. Mm-hmm. Did, did you, did, was, what do you mean? Some, some of the men's teams were riding gravel bikes, meaning they were just out riding around on them or they were testing them for the actual race. It's Israel premier tech, I think on their factor. Yeah. And yeah. they were riding the actual gravel bike tomorrow. So they uh, went out and tested okay. both bikes, the road and the gravel, and decided to do the gravel. Okay. All right. L- L- yeah. I told, I told this guy a couple of years ago when, when gravel was really coming on and gravel bikes were just getting, I mean, I, I have my new uh, GS1. This thing rides like a road. I rode it yesterday on the road. It's fantastic. I said to, to George at the time, I said, why, why wouldn't they just ride gravel bikes, right? These, the, the roads are so brutal. The gravel bikes are now, they perform and handle and feel like a road bike when you're on pavement. This makes no sense. Like why try to sort of back your way into a road bike with wider tires and double handlebar tape, uh, like just ride these gravel bikes. And he, well, he, and he, he, he laughed at me. He laughed at me. He so did. I'm, this is day made yeah, they were saying you know that one of the main differences was the longer wheelbase and that that of course you know the reaction time is going to be better for on the cobbles and stuff so i mean it just worked on a whole on a bunch of different levels and uh it's it's interesting yeah because they've come so far in the gravel bikes cannot wait cannot you're wait. gonna love it yeah <laughs> here's, a, here's a here's a question just going back to the gearing um why ride it? Why even have a 10, right? If you, but so you, you told me both, both Balsamo and, and a lot of Quebec, you had, uh, well, one had 52, 10, one had 50, 10. Why even have a 10? I mean, a 10 is, I mean, I, okay. If there's a paved ripping downhill or downwind section. Okay. But they weren't in that. They weren't anywhere near that 10 in the sprint. Well, I'm I sure Balsamo's wondering why she even had the 52 on there, you know, yeah. you know, good Pecky could do it with a 50, but yeah, you don't, she wouldn't have needed the 10. The 52, I, I don't hate the 52 because you, with that bigger front chain ring, then you can keep your chain in the, in the rear cog set more in the middle of the cogs. Mm-hmm. And that's more efficient, right? Anytime that chain starts to bend over, if you did get down to a 10 or an 11 or 12, the chain is bending the wrong way. Yeah. I don't hate the 52. I mean, I think it based on, so she had 52, what'd you say? 10, 28. So, she, I mean, the, yeah. so the best, I mean, your best chain line is like a 52, 16, but I don't think you ever need a 10. Mm-hmm. No, they had some, Pretty big ripping tailwinds, but those sections yeah. are so short on that course because it zigzags. Um, but it's about the gear ratio too. It's just I think when you want these like smaller gear ratios, the one by does help with that. So I think she probably chose the ten twenty eight for a 
closer gear ratio for finding that perfect gear for her. And Lada kind of found did a little bit more lax on a bailout gear. And like what I do, um, like winning a gravel race, like unbound or something like that, I'm riding a 44 and a 1052. <laughs> Just, I mean, and so that's why I was like, whoa, that gearing is not much difference. Cause I, I mean, that 10 though, I do need if you're, you know, cause the 44 is, is quite small in the front when you're going real fast, but I, you need that 10. I don't know for me in my head, I just want the 10, but I'm a masher though. So I'm not a spinner. And, so. and, and when it's 200 miles, folks, you just never know <laughs> anything can happen. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> they threw in this long downhill. We had 200 miles to find the longest downhill and wherever that race is. And we found it. Oh, thank God I had the 10 on Jesus Christ. Or thank heavens you had the 52 because they found the one 25% climb within 200 miles. <laughs> but uh, digressing though, I do, um, I had a couple, couple interesting points. One, I would like to give a big shout out to Ellen Van Dyke, yes. six months postpartum making the winning split. The last time she raced Perry Roubaix, it was, um, she got eighth and she had that nasty crash. Remember elbow was all like, oi. And, um, she took a year or so off, had a baby six months later, here she is in the winning break, leading out her teammate in the velodrome gives me the chills. Like, I love it. And, uh, maternity leave now being a normal, somewhat normalized thing in the women's peloton. It's exciting to see. So more moms coming back. Um, it's kind of cool. So shout out to her. Awesome. And I, man, I'm excited to see how she looks at the Olympics. I think she's really coming up. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I do think we need to touch on it. We are praising uh, Pfeiffer Georgie for her phenomenal ride. Um, and it, like I said, it's not somebody that's coming out of nowhere. She's been super consistent, you know, top 10 Estrade, top five at Flam. I mean, she's she's a classics consistent rider, but she is just showing that and improving it. So when you look at her, it's like seventh at Amstel Gold, eighth last year at PR, like she's doing well. But what I noticed is this is the first time this year we've seen DSM on the front right. controlling Agreed. the race and Raquel Barberi was on the front a lot. And she was my teammate, uh, Italian sprinter world champion on the track and, uh, watching my teammate, my former teammate, like just crushing the cobbles. And I'm like, what is DSM doing on the front? There's little Trek. There's SD works pro time. Like, what are you doing DSM? And then sure enough, look at that. They podium props yep. to them. And she didn't get DNF like, uh, Matthews. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it was so exciting to see the different teams getting up there and taking it to SD Works a bit. You know, it, it's exciting to watch. Well, we talked last week about some internal stuff. I mean, this has to go a long ways. They certainly, if you just, all we, all we can do is really watch on TV and study the reaction of, of the team and teammates and post-race reactions with each other. This probably goes a long ways. In terms of morale. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Um, I was like, where yeah, are we like, going what? with this? <laughs> no. no, I mean, it, uh, as opposed to the drama last week, <laughs> I was also, I was also just sort of skimming the results here. Cause I, I do think it's worth talking a little bit about, uh, cause our audience always asks like how, 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 how did the Americans fare? I'm going down the list here. So top American, uh, 45th Lily Williams from human powered yeah. health. Human powered health looked like they had a lot of issues today. It just seemed like crashes, mechanicals, all kinds of things. It was too bad for them. And she was in a crash, right? Yeah. Well, Lily's good. Um, you know, she's, she's, uh, she's a really strong classics rider. Good on the track. Um, definitely vying some Paris 2024 selections. Um, hmm. so we had a uh, Corinne on EF was there. Um, Corinne LaBecky, not Kapecky, LaBecky, <laughs> who I'm a big fan of. Um, but yeah, it just looked like a little bit of bad luck today out there for, for quite a bit, but super exciting race. It's just exciting. Weird. It's, it's, it's just so crazy too. to what, and I guess we'll see the same for the men's race tomorrow. I mean, racing Perry Bay and 75 degrees. I mean, I, it just, it, it, I remember watching Andre Schmiel win in the snow and I'm like, is it always like that? And it's, it's always seemed those years, it just seemed to be not always snowing, but certainly cold and wet and guys wearing leg warmers and gloves and boy, to see a race like this, it doesn't change the, the, I mean, it does change the cobbles, but it doesn't change how difficult they are to ride over, but boy, 75 starting 75 in the, in sunny. Well, and you don't expect to see salt, salt stains on, on the no. 
No. You know, when they're showing them and they've got the salt all over their shorts and stuff, it's like, you know, just not something you expect to see at Pierre Roubaix. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I got to go over there in a few weeks. My son's in Paris oh. at culinary school, so I'm going to go visit him. So for, for, for y'all listening in Paris, um, and if you've got any controls over the weather, then let, just keep that around. I'd be mighty happy. I'm going to ride my bike around the, the Bois de Boulogne in town. And uh, that'd be great. 75 and sunny. Yeah. So. I wish you that weather. I think, yeah, I think we had a, a great race today. Fourth edition. Yes. Of Perry Roubaix, Perry, Perry. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, I said this to y'all earlier. I mean, it's, it's, look, if somebody's that strong and rides away with 10K to go and wins by 30 seconds, hey. You deserve it. But if we're all, I was I'm assuming we were all sitting on our couch, like, hey, it's just better. All right, let's throw five or six or seven people in there and let them figure it out on a velodrome. Like it's, 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 it's it was a, to your point, Allie, it's a hell of a race. Mm-hmm. Hell of a race. Fourth edition, um, big props to Zwift uh, for being the title sponsor of not only this race, but also when we're all together back in Aspen, watching the Tour de France bomb of X Zwift. I've got my watch the bomb hats on that. So just remember to uh, always watch women's cycling, watch women's sports, hashtag watch the bomb. It's a, I'm a big, I'm a big fan, Lance. I was just dying. I'm, I'm on cloud nine today. I love watching women's, women's sports. <laughs> women's sports is, I've, I've said this for a couple of years, having a moment. All right. I, I watched this. I watched this Caitlin Clark last night, the Ooh. Iowa, the Iowa versus Connecticut. Um, look, I mean, and I haven't seen the TV data from last night. I saw the, the, uh, the game previous to this, we're pulling numbers equal to the men's game. Did you see the I'm ticket sure. sales costs? They were right, like $200 the, more a ticket to I, get I, to I the women's you. game. Yeah. I got you. I mean, it, it, it's, it says a lot. It also says a lot to just the, the power of having um, that athlete, right. That draws, that's just so, there's just a magnet. Right. And so the game was incredible, came all the way down to the end, but it's, it's a thing. And, and I love it. I love it. It's a yeah. father, three girls. Long time it's, coming. That's for oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, 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 yes, too long, uh, too long coming. But, um, as it, as the only dude on this podcast, <laughs> I, uh, uh, the good news is I think it's here to stay. So, yeah. We'll That's let awesome. you stay on the podcast too. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> Allie was before she's like, listen to another motherfucker. You don't say n- something nice about women's sports. You're not coming on the podcast anymore. <laughs> I'll right. hijack it. Nah. <laughs> well, well, cool. You're going to get I, a little eclipse tonight, you know? No, um, it's Monday. No, no, no. It's, it's Monday. Monday. Okay. It's a big deal. Uh, I'm actually going to be in Orlando for some meetings. So I'm going to miss the eclipse. I don't know that, it, oh, no. that, that it's eclipsing or no, in Orlando, but and it's and it's for all these people that came to Central Texas to be in the path of totality. The forecast is for uh, clouds, so I don't know what that does to eclipses. Again, some of you propeller heads out there listening probably know, but it's not going to be clear. So that sucks. Speaking of the path of totality, as we wrap up, Lada Kapeki was in the path of totality. Today. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, when are we back together? The Ardennes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love it. I love the Ardennes. Mm. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah. That's a great question. So Mari, when are you making your way back to the mainland? Are you just going to my way back at the end of next week? I'm going to Scottsdale for the tour of Scottsdale. Oh. And then Mari and I are going to see each other in a couple of weeks at uh Sea Otter classic with uh, your business partner, Mel strong. Love We're going to have, a- yeah, it's going to be great. Golly. It'll be the reunion. That'll be fun. Okay, good. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good weekend, everybody. Have a good eclipse if you're somewhere in the path. And um, be in the path of total no, solidarity, maybe. Maybe we do path of solidarity. Is that okay. what we know? Well, when it's cloudy, <laughs> yeah. When it's cloudy, change the name. All right, y'all. Take care. All right. Watch the fun. Bye. 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 Bye.